Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming in early today and being punctual. Um, to, to introduce myself, I'm Chloe. I'm doing the product management of Cisco Suze. And here is Mark, the software engineer of my team. And today we're going to talk about uh, data log uh, a logging monitoring software called Cisco Suze. And first of all, we would like to uh, uh, tell you about more about the data monitoring market and what the customer need in um, what do we perceive our customer. And then we'll talk about uh, how Cisco Suits is capable of um, monitoring logging for you. And then we'll show you a short demo of the dashboards um, of uh, the visualization of logs and metrics, etc. And then uh, we'll have a uh, Q&A session afterwards. And once again, I uh, would like to talk about the, the survey here. We hope you can take the survey and leave the email address uh, within the survey. Tell us what you think uh, so that we can know more about you. So let's get started. Um, how many companies here are users, at least, for example, cloud, virtual machines, or web servers? Great. Almost every company, right? So um, why am I asking this simple question? And it's important to know that um, all of these uh, machines actually generate uh, lots of metrics. And they have this thing in common. And um, actually, we can know a lot about uh, your, your system from logs and metrics if you manage it well and you, if you um, know how to visualize it um, in real time, and you can know, gain a lot of insights from these kind of data. And we have been doing a lot of customer research um, for a few months, and we have been asking our customer, what do they think about logs and metrics? What do they think about when they want to manage and visualize their data? And a lot of them tell us that um, they would like to manage a growing set of data, but they are from different sources. For example, they are from applications, web servers, or network. And it's really hard for them to uh, combine all of them together in order to do uh, good monitoring. And also, um, they have a tough time navigating through different data in order to generate reports and dashboards uh, to gain meaningful insights from it. Um, also, one other thing is that um, most of the companies are not, um, are not monitoring data, and it's like, I mean, it's not their full-time job to uh, figure out how to monitor data. And they want a quick solutions to do it instead of uh, they have to manage the infrastructure by themselves and et cetera. And therefore, we have been building Cisco Suits, a cloud-based logging solution for um, the to solve the above problems. And uh, in a nutshell, what is Cisco Suits? It's a cloud-based um, surface which helps you guys to solve to address your pain of large-scale IT operational management, um, to monitor the data from across different sources, um, no matter, actually it's any sources, no matter VMs, containers, whatever. And um, to introduce Cisco SUS, um, we would like to first talk about the benefits of it. And firstly, SUS actually um, runs on cloud primarily, so you send data to the system and you don't need to worry about anything, and then you can visualize uh, on the web interface or using the API, or you, if you prefer, you can use the API client. Um, it also uh, can be run uh, on-premises. You can uh, host it by yourself, as some of the clients have told us that they would like to have an on-premises solution instead of the SaaS. Um, it also helps you monitor data, and you don't need to worry about your infrastructure, because um, we help you store the data. We help you um, parse, store, and analyze your data. And all you need to do is to go to the interface and point and click in order to make your own visualization. And thirdly, it's optimized for both event data and performance data, logs and metrics, in other term, which uh, not all of the other solutions in the market are doing the same thing today. Like some of them do logs, some of them do metrics, but not all of them do the both together. Um, it's also a lot it also centralized the monitoring of logs and metrics because, uh, as I mentioned, it can monitor servers, from servers to applications, whatever, so that you can put 
put all your uh, machine's data all together in a single pane of glass so as um, for, for the convenience of monitoring. And um, if, you, if you are monitoring your data, and it, you you have a real time dashboards of the graphs you wanna of the data you wanna monitor, and you can look at the graphs. But to be honest, you don't want to sit in front of computer and look at the graphs. And therefore, we have made an alert for you, which means uh, you can set up, for example, threshold alert. If, for example, a matrix, a CPU exceeds certain value, and then you will be prompted. You, uh, an email will be sent to you to tell you, oh, uh, there's something happening in your system, and you have to take actions. And it helps you uh, take timely action. Uh, and you don't need to worry about, uh, I have to um, be alert um, to the dashboard all the time and stuff like that. And also, we have we are going to implement our anomaly detection. So, I, I bet all of you know what anomaly detection is. Um, so, you set a certain percentage uh, of anomaly that you want to monitor, and if there's anomaly exists uh, exists in your data, then you will be alerted as well. And it monitors and visualizes data in a good way. So uh, I would like to dive deeper into the graph, um, the process here. How does SUS actually work? So um, because it's an end-to-end -end solution. So firstly, you have to send us data. And you have to deploy a standard agent, FluentD, in, into your machine. Um, and then data will start flows to our system. And you don't need to worry about anything in between. You just go to our web interface, log into your account, um, and then you can start visualizing. You can start consuming your data by doing query search, um, making graphs, uh, making alerts, etc. Or if you don't want to use your the user interface, and you, you can even use the API we provided, or um, use our SUS API client in Python, Go, Java, and Ruby, whichever you like. Um, and we actually have a complete documentation of how to use all these clients. And we'll show you in a minute. Um, a lot of people are wondering why there is Cisco SUS when there are a lot of different um, solutions in the market. And one of the major reasons is that a lot of uh, solutions out there are point solutions only. They focus on, for example, event management only, or security, or application performance management, which doesn't actually allow you to um, focus on um, to monitor in a centralized way. And therefore, um, Cisco is, is a good solution for it. And secondly, you can also do it by yourself. You can DIY your own solution. But you also have to manage um, your separate infrastructure. You have to manage uh, how to store data, hosting, et cetera, which is, might not be particularly interesting to you. Um, and what you actually want to do is to um, know, uh, prevent failure. You want to plan better. You want to know when bad events is going to happen in your system. And therefore, it's a really good solution for you um, to be able to do that. So in short, Cisco SUS ingests large-scale data, and then we help you store, um, store it, visualize it, and help you monitor it in a better way, and send you alert right to your mailbox when there is something bad happening. And especially if you are a Cisco customer already, you're, or you are having a Cisco portfolio, it's even better uh, for you to use Cisco SUS to monitor your Cisco products because um, it's more integrated than the solutions outside. Um, having said that, um, Cisco SUS also can monitor um, your products outside of Cisco. So it, it monitors everything. And these are some of the use cases um, that we have been doing. Um, we have been doing infrastructure performance monitoring and troubleshooting. We provide um, customer real-time alerts. And um, we have a complete solution guide, which I uh, would like to show you here. Uh, Wait. One minute, sorry.
so this is the solution, guys. We have uh, a complete set uh, for different solutions, and we also have a support team, which you can uh, email us or call us if you have problems when you use this uh, surface. Um, and also, we do secure mon security monitoring um, we are Cisco approved solution to capture security logs. And we also are used by a lot of different BUs within Cisco uh, for development testing. And uh, let me give you a short demo of how to use the SUS interface. So right here is the user interface of SUS, and I'm going to show you how to uh, look at the dashboard for logs. <coughs> I'm going to open um, a report for a chat server that we are monitoring. And we're going to change the time window to, say, 60 days. And as you can see, you can uh, see the data into, in a map format. Or you can see oh, uh, where the client is from. Uh, the major majority of clients is from San Jose. And you can see uh, what messages is going on in the chat server in a descending order. And beside that, you can also, this is the application level. You can also go to the network le level where you, where you're monitoring your network. And you can see, um, so uh, what's, what's, the, what's the net flow by source IP by source port, internet port? Um, where's the IP address, addresses are from? And et cetera. And you can uh, do it by yourself within the user interface very easily. And. Yep, it's the same thing. And you can see um, uh, most of the users of uh, the, the data are from Redwood City, something like that. And secondly, I'm going to show you the metrics dashboard. Mm, you're going to choose which dashboard you're going to look at. And I'm choosing the chat server. And you can see different metrics here in a time series graph. Um, you can uh, create it by choosing your own data that you want to monitor. And it's real time. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. So this is the chat server we are monitoring uh, right now. And this, to sum up what I showed you just now, we have seen the application view of, the, of our monitoring, uh, the system performance, the network view, and the syslog view. And we have some good news to you guys. Uh, a few months ago, we have our uh, latest release. And these are the new features within our latest release. And I'm going to walk you through each of them. So I just show you the uh, web interface right now. And the, this gray block right here is the newly added features is the administrative administration panel in which um, there is one admin per account. And he can have access to every data. And he can choose, oh, um, I want this user to be able to access um, data A. But he cannot access data B. So I can um, make permission here, read and write permission. Um, you can also manage your bu data buckets here. And secondly, the alert panel, in which you can manage your alerts. You can see what alerts you have triggered, et cetera. And this is the multiple users per account. Um, Cisco suits allow multi-tenancy. The admin can choose, um, can have role-based access control. They, they can choose, uh, the users can have access to different kind of data. And here is the bucket for segregating data. 
So buckets is a separation of data. So it's, it's like a place for you to put data inside to separate it into different buckets. And uh, you can do this um, role-based access control in this interface as well. This is the alerts um, interface where you can choose uh, which bucket you want to uh, monitor for, for, the, for setting the alert. Um, you, you can set the threshold value. You can put emails, addresses, multiple email addresses as you like. And you can set the notify period as well. And this is the API. And you can see there's alert API calls, logs, metrics, and triggered alerts. It's very simple, very easy. And this is the you, to dive deeper into the post alert rules. And that's pretty much Cisco SUS. Um, so after this introduction, I want you guys, all, all of you, to know that um, there are four major benefits of Cisco SUS. And firstly, it, it is integrated. Um, you can monitor all stack layers very easily, seamlessly within the software. Uh, it is optimized for both event data and performance data, logs and metrics, uh, which other solutions in the market might not be able to do that. It, also, it is also secured because it's encrypted by default, and we allow, we support multi-tenancy, role-based access control. It is hybrid. You can choose um, to work on cloud or work on uh, your, to host by yourself. Um, and also, it's easy to consume. You only need to point and click, just like what I showed you just now in the UI. And you can request our beta from this website here right now to try out um, what's, um, what you're going to do with SUSE. And you, sh you can tell us what you, what you want to do uh, with SUSE, what you're going to do it, uh, what, what you're going to intend to use it for. And also, you can tell us how you feel about uh, our presentation and our workshops in Cisco Live here, and tell us what you think. And also, um, these are the contacts of Cisco SUSE. And at the end, hope you guys can take our survey here on this website. You can take a picture of it if you don't have time right now, um, because it's important for us to know what you think about our product. Um, we really value customer feedback. And also, one major thing is we you, you um, put input your email addresses here, in which we will create a Spark room, and we'll send all the, all the information, all the, for example, documentation, API clients documentation for you within the Spark room. So please do that. And if you have qu any questions, feel free to ask. Could you? Hey. Um, I have a question. So you have not at all mentioned the open source projects you, you're building this upon. I mean, this is not at all. I mean, this is all built upon Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana, and you're using these technologies without even mentioning them. And uh, I kind of feel bad about it, really. And I wonder, what are you going to give back to the community by just taking all this for free, branding it as a Cisco product? and trying to sell it in a way that it's a Cisco invention. It's definitely not. So for me, there's three major key points. Are you going to give back any of the dashboards, the grok patterns, especially you know, for the Cisco part, where we're, where we're having this um, huge infrastructure, Cisco logs, and you know how to make sense out of them. It's really hard for us to make sense out of them. So are you going to give this back, and are you going to give back like um, telemetry um, splitters and all this data. So at least I think this is something you should consider contribu contributing back because you're building this upon all, all open source technology. Mm -hmm. I think Mark will be yeah, a better so, person. Uh, well, you have made lots of assumptions. We are not using Logstash. Uh, we are obviously using Kibana. Uh, we are not hiding it. And the reason we are using Kibana is mainly because we want our customers to find extremely easy to, to transition. And let's face it, how many of you uh, have used Kibana in the past or know about Kibana? Only, only two? Well, that's surprising. So uh, mostly anyone who has done monitoring before has used or heard of Kibana and Grafana. Uh, so that's the reason why uh, we use them. It's not, sorry? 
So we use, a, uh, we use an ensemble of database internally. For the querying, we will use Elasticsearch, but that's not the only one. Uh, also, um, we do contribute back to the community. If you go to our GitHub, you'll see that we have published a set of Fluentd plugins. We are contributing to the Fluentd community. Uh, why? Because we chose to go with Fluentd for our ingestion agent, like the main one, uh, to actually uh, benefit from the community and also contribute back. They have over 500 plugins. Uh, they can forward any kind of data. Um, and we use them. We also contribute back. So yeah, that's, that's my answer to your question. It's, to be honest, most of the code uh, in, in ZUS is proprietary. It's not just open source projects. Um, we do have familiar user interfaces. We are actually going to be moving away from that um, in the future from Kebana and Grafana, because while they make it easier for users to transition, they do have some important gaps. Um, we are going to be releasing um, our own UI that will let you mix logs and metrics in single graphics and stuff like that, which, let's say, one of the beauties of having logs and metrics together is the extra information you get. For ex when imagine the Java heap uh, error. You get an error, a log saying Java heap exceeded. There's no memory left. But before you see that, if you have the metrics available in the same dashboard, or you, you, you can do correlation between them, you'll be able to predict this error before it happens. So that's, that's something that we want to achieve uh, with our new UI, uh, which cannot be achieved currently with Kebana and Grafana. Um, also, uh, we are going to be releasing a, a marketplace on top, on top of that as well. Because um, we have been, well, that's, that's like, I'm expanding a lot, but we have been talking to lots of customers about the analytics they want. And we see that we could very well provide uh, users with, uh, like, machine learning analytics, but at the end of the day, every customer has a different need. So what will work for you will not work for anyone else. And everyone says, I want analytics, but the reality is that everyone wants different analytics. And most of them already have the algorithms running because of, of their in-house data scientists. So we are enabling these uh, customers and all customers to use their own analytics integrated with Zeus. Uh, we actually have a, a demo later on that, uh, how to use TensorFlow with Zeus running in an IPython uh, notebook as a service, so you don't even have to install anything. And customers then just tell their data scientists to uh, use the Zeus API to uh, consume the data and to send the results. And that's it. And the uh, new UI is not released yet, but uh, if you're interested, we can um, share some screenshot uh, after, after the session. Uh, as you mentioned before, um, uh, since it currently you're using um, uh, like this, like Kibana and Grafana, um, you didn't mention uh, maybe it's too early to mention it, but um, licensing wise, like in the end, licensing wise, like um, uh, to use this, um, uh, what, what is the plan? To to like implement this the software when it's released. It, yes. Um, Zeus is a service, and the on-prem version of Zeus is uh, what we call on-prem service. So you get the exact same experience. Once the new UI is released in a few months, um, it will just be updated. You for a while you'll probably have access to Grafana and Kibana as well as the new UI. Eventually, um, once we have been able to get more customer feedback, it will be replaced entirely. Uh, but it will work as a service. That's um, I had another question about, uh, you, you said to collect data, you absolutely need to have a free ND installed. Uh, is that possible to have, I mean, for example, uh, syslogs uh, added to it or I mean, any standard mechanisms, logging mechanisms. And do you support also uh, active polling? So your question was if we can get syslog into Zeus, for example. So yeah, if you look at Fluentd, uh, it will by default support syslog. If you have 
like as I said, there are over 500 plugins for Fluentd for all types of data. Uh, I'm not sure about C polling, to be honest. Uh, and we have seen that most customers will find their plugin. We have also created some plugins for Cisco products, let's say UCS. And if there is no plugin, um, we have seen many customers using the APIs directly. So some customers want to send business data. They will use uh, the, the Zeus API from Node.js, for example. Uh, if we don't have a client, they will build their own client. Actually, we have done that in the past in Cisco Live for hackathons. And university students use the API from Node.js or C, uh, and they have complete solutions running within 24 hours. Uh, once, I think, one student even built a multiplayer video game using Zeus and its real-time feature uh, as a backend and the API. So yeah, you can send any type of data. The question really is, I mean, if, if I, we have all these Nexus, all these iOS devices, all these sensors, look, they're all different. So you know how to make sense out of them. So I think this question is really valid. I mean, UCS is one use case. Nexus is another one. Uh, ACI is another one. And um, this is really the question. If, if you cover all that, this will be really important. No, no. OK, I got it. That's a very good question. So uh, these plugins for Fluentd will parse the data. Um, it will, they will parse it to st uh, in standard ways. And then we will not do further processing in Zeus for this data, other than like the minimum analytics for alerting and other features that you have enabled. Uh, so it really is up to you how you want to further uh, process this data. Uh, we have seen that customers have special needs on, like, I want to parse this field, or I want to augment the data and add some uh, different timestamp or uh, coordinates. So they do that from their client Fluentd. Uh, Fluentd has all these plugins to reform the data, um, like in runtime, which is which um, it, it keeps it performant as well, which is nice. Uh, and we offer support guides on how to um, modify this data. We have a, a technical support team that uh, are very good at creating TDH and conf like Fluentd configuration files for all these things, and they will support our customers. They will help them. Uh, and if we see then that uh, for certain type of data there is no plugin, uh, which is quite unusual, then we will create plugins. Any more questions? If not, uh, thank you very much for coming. And um, you can get one of these contact methods from the entrance. Um, and hope you will fill in the surveys, and we'll hear from you soon. Thank you.